what's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals and some other interesting stuff at DLT Trading. Uh, right off the bat, I want to point out, um, if you were paying attention to DLT this week, some really wild stuff dropped that I was not expecting, and I definitely want to talk about it um, because it's got some interesting implications. So, as per usual, I will link these pages down in the description. It absolutely helps a ton if you use those links before you check something out or pick something up. I would appreciate it, but that's up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Let's take a look here. First of all, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I recorded this once and my system just deleted it. So we're going to be going pretty quick here because I've already seen all this stuff. But that'll make it easier on you guys because I'm not seeing this for the first time as, as I usually am. The Heretic Mini Pariah, number one, uh, I uh, I saw this immediately when I started last time. 178 bucks. This is not a small knife. 8.1 inches in Magna Cut, made in the USA. That's pretty cool. This is a black polymer handle, but it makes it very similar to like um, the MSI, the uh, the the injection mold plastic MSI. Like it's in the same price point. It's an automatic knife, right? Uh, so if you're looking to get American Auto and you don't mind the polymer handles, that's not a bad buy. I just wanted to point out there, it's not a mini knife. Like, I don't, I feel like companies should be really careful when they put mini because what we think in our head is like a seven inch knife. No, it's a full size knife for sure. Some fixed blades. We definitely need to talk about this. This is the type of sneaky stuff that I see sometimes, and I don't mean sneaky in a bad way, but DLT Trading will not always put stuff like this on their coming soon page. This is a full size Les George Midtech, a new one. Right? It looks a lot like the Talos handle with a sheep's foot blade, which is really cool. We're looking at Magna Cut, which will be properly heat treated. Uh, Les George has used it in the past and done a nice high HRC on this. This is 8.375 inches, making it very similar to the VECP and Talos models. It's going to drop in three days, 22 hours. You guys are seeing this on Saturday morning. So look here, October 1st at 10 a.m. If you're interested in picking up a new Les George Midtech, I would recommend this diamond textured model because that looks absolutely amazing. You're, you're definitely going to need to be paying attention to this. But I'll make another notification on my community tab about this. October 1st, 10 a.m. These will almost certainly go lightning fast. These This tier of knives is definitely like user collector uh, tier. Les George Midtex always go really quick and they are super nice. I still EDC my VECP and it's amazing. Um, so I think this this um, sheep's foot model will be really cool. If you're not into the, uh, you know, the texturing, they have a smooth one, and they also have the morpho or the morph pattern, which a lot of people prefer. Definitely one that I needed to point out because a full American mid tech, full tie, right at 425. The base model is 425. That's great. That's a really good price. But those will go quick. The Guardian Tactical Recon 40s. This is a giant. OTF. Absolutely giant. Sorry, sitting up here because I realized I adjusted my camera and now I'm like sitting super low. But this is a Guardian Tactical Recon 40. That means it's 9.75 inches. This is a Scarab 2 size knife. In fact, it's actually a little bit bigger. The picture makes it look like the little one. It's not the little one. Uh, this is a, a fantastic price for an XL dual action American OTF. And it fires easier than any other OTF on the market. If you've never experienced the Guardian Tactical Switch, it's a steel plate with bearings underneath the switch. So it is impossibly easy to deploy. But this is a bigger guy. It fires with an incredible amount of force. Anybody who owns this knife will back up this statement. This knife has the most amazing dual action of any uh, other dual action automatic on the market. It is really, really incredible. Uh, absolutely wonderful. So if you like the idea of a big dual action OTF and you don't want to pay the price for a Scarab 2, that's a really good deal. Uh, they have all black ones too. I'm actually really tempted by that all black one. Uh, what was the next thing that I pointed out? No surprise that these three inch Harpoon Spantos are still in stock. Those aren't incredibly popular. Also, no surprise that the Project X's are sold out. If you've been waiting on a Project X and you're under the impression that the fact that the three inch models are still sitting in stock means that all hinder knives will always sit around in stock incorrect certain models from hinder knives just like any other company are substantially more popular um you know depending on depending on the model right so the project x that sold out they were there for just a bit but they sold out and so if you're waiting on a project x it's probably one of those knives you're going to want to jump on right uh the protect uh, pdw invictus 
Um, this is the all black one. This is the one that I always talked about being Protec, one of Protec's best knives. It's based on the original Prometheus Design Works Invictus. So it's an automatic collaboration with Protec. This thing fires crazy hard, but it's also a great EDC profile. If you're going to pick up a Protec knife, I would consider, I would suggest you consider looking at the Invictus because it is awesome. I still own my Gathering 12 edition and I love it. I've shown it many times um, on camera. I would, I would highly recommend this one. Yes, it's quite the markup from uh, the version I have, but this guy's in Magna Cut. Mine's in 154 CM. Not that that's, you know, a hundred bucks more worth it. I think maybe it's, I think mine was almost 300. I think mine was like 280, 285, maybe 290. So yeah, it's not bad. Uh, there's a stitch there, eh, but it's got the writing on it. Kind of skipped over that one pretty quick for that exact reason. The Vanguard uh, ESOX is an interesting looking knife. It's a profile we've seen many times. If you're going to pick up a standard hinder knife, I would recommend looking at the Harpoon Spanto Eclipse. I brought this up in the last video. I don't want to rush this. The Harpoon Spanto is my favorite aesthetic blade shape from hinder knives, and it complements the Eclipse design perfectly. As a very long time hinderer fan, I'll give you a quick history on this model. The Eclipse was designed to overtake the XM18. It is an evolution of the XM18 in every way, but because the XM18's popularity was so powerful, it ended up just being kind of a, 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 a side version of the Hinder XM18, right? It's still never been as popular, but it is superior in design. Ergonomically, it is more comfortable. The flipper tab is better. It's not as hook-shaped, right? Um, it's, just, it's just a better overall knife. More cutting edge, given that you don't have that forward choil, um, so the fact that they finally included the Harpoon Spanto on this thing, uh, for the new gens is just awesome. Like this is a hinder knife I would highly recommend. And it also has S45 VN, which hinder, in my opinion, does a way better job with than 20 CV. That's a much better steal for this geometry anyway. This is the, this is like the quintessential hinder knife to get. If, uh, you look at the XM18 and you think that looks like an outdated model. Yeah. The, uh, the Eclipse is, is definitely a better model. It's just not quite as popular. And I love the XM18. I do. That's the one that I collect, but the, the Eclipse is better. So consider looking at it because they have quite a few on this website. XM18 Autos, I won't spend quite as much time here, but these are like pre-customized by Hinderer, which is why they cost a little bit more. These are really cool. No surprise, all of them are gone, except for this guy right here. This poor guy right here is bronze with copper, which isn't the best color combination, right? But these other ones were really cool, and in particular, this one. I'm really jealous of whoever picked this one up. The blue and the bronze looks awesome. But these are full titanium automatics with factory custom hardware, which is really, really cool. Ah, uh, next page. What was the next thing? Oh, yeah. So I got hung up on this guy because this freaking thing is a fixed version of the Midgard's Messer Boss folding knife with the same blade stock thickness as the PMP Alpha Beast, but in fixed blade form. Look at this. But wait, it's the medium sized one. There's one that's even bigger. This is crazy. If you want the fixed blade version of the uh, the Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII. This is it. And this one is even thicker. 0. 0.43. That's almost half an inch thick of, this is funny, 14C28N. A lot of people are going to moan and groan about that. Chinese fixed blade made of the 14C28N. Let's do the math here. This blade being 6.3 inches in length and much taller than your average knife blade, if we take the materials, if we reduce the value of this to materials alone, how much does it cost for your average Chinese 14C28N folding knife? 50 bucks on the low end, right? How many blades could you make out of that one stock of 14C28N? Probably five, right? $250 if your math is, if you're quick-witted, <laughs> yeah. If you reduce it to materials alone, that fixed blade price makes perfect sense, right? But, but it's a folding knife. You can't compare folding knives to fixed blades. You've said that before. True. Um, if you like how ridiculous this is, because this is stupid in the best way. It's stupid in the best way. And it is legitimately an indestructible fixed blade. Right? Look at this. What would you have to do to just... I don't think you could... I don't think anyone can break this. I think this is legitimately, especially, it's a stainless, ultra tough, because 14C28N is known for being tough, 
as a stainless composition, right? Yeah. That's like the ultimate do anything with knife. It looks awesome. I'm legitimately tempted in buying it. If the big one had a black handle, I'd buy it right now. I think that looks awesome. So McNee's uh, PM Mach 2s, both in automatic. I think these are all manual, but I felt like I saw some um, automatic ones. Those are cool. I wish they were a little bigger. Not a bad price. More Harpoon Spantos. If you don't like the black and you want Coyote or OD Green, they also have a manual uh, Bowie left over with the, the flu booger scales, right? Some large Encosis. Wow, I didn't realize that one was still there. Uh, with the Insingo blade, it's kind of a rare knife. Yeah, is that silver bead blast? That's glass bead blast. Six fifty though. I bet that's a good looking, a good looking boy. Magna cut. Oh wow! I bet you that'll be gone tomorrow. Black canvas micarta in Singo large in Kosi. Yeah, those don't. I think this one probably got scanned over because people are thinking it's the small one. Um, I I would recommend that one for sure. Lots of those, lots of lots of the amphibians all hanging out now. Large and cozy Tanto, same thing. Um, we're go I know we're going really fast here. Um, I'm just it sucks having to re-record this because I I want you guys to see this. Medford, Medford, yeah. So the thing that I wanted to check out. Did you guys know that this that these dropped? Aluminum XM18 autos. What? The price is actually, you know, uh, like versus the titanium ones, it's $250 less. That's pretty cool. Still a lot more than your average American knife, but the build quality on an XM18 is substantially better than your average American folding knife. This is really awesome to be able to get a hinder automatic for 350 bucks. No surprise that these were gone. These were gone lightning fast lightning fast holy moly those things especially the inexpensive ones i say inexpensive but i know there's people go 350 dollars who would ever pay that listen to what i'm saying these were gone right before you could even question whether or not a pocket knife should be 350 dollars, they were gone right if the implication there isn't this community and the people willing to buy within the community have been around for a very, very long time, and the potency or the urgency of this community is much more much more potent than I could have comprehended. If that's not the immediate implication, I don't know what to tell you, right? I'm not trying to oversell you. I'm just letting you know, even if you're not interested, this, this market has existed for a very long time. So if you are interested in something like this, take it from somebody who's seen everything from Hinder Knives over the last 10 years at least, if these drop again, they will go quick. If you're interested, it's a you've probably got seconds or minutes to pick it up. I know it sounds like I'm promoting FOMO, but I'm, I'm telling the truth here. Uh, anybody who's been in my position with Hinder Knives and watched what's happened over the last 10 years knows that what I'm saying is absolutely true. This is the type of model that will go lightning fast. These more expensive ones with the special inlays, they probably sat for slightly longer, but those also sold out very quickly. So my guess is these will drop again because they they weren't site specific, they weren't hinder site specific or exclusive. They hit a retailer. That means you will see them again. And if you do, and they're in stock and you want to buy it, if you are able to, go ahead and do it because they'll be gone otherwise. Um, you can sign up for notifications uh by clicking on the you know the model and then i think there's an option um yeah it'll say notify me when available and people are going to point out that doesn't always work it doesn't but sometimes that's your only option right so you might as well do it uh, i also want to go over to e knives because they have a few things they always have some stuff it's like similar to dlt trading but they got some stuff that is unique so if you're looking at this the black one you know on dlt and you're like i'd like the same thing but not with the pearl button they got one over here with the red button or they have one with a black blade and a silver button with OD green scales, which I think is really, really cool. Also in Magna Cut for the same price. Protect Godson in blue sapphire, which is super duper cool. Uh, they have a few different versions of the McNeese Mach, uh, or PM Mach 2. Some of them more expensive because they've got more elaborate inlays or whatever. Um, but there was something else here that I wanted to take a look at. Red LUDTs, there's a couple of different versions on this website. So if you missed 
the red LED T drop that I posted on uh, DLT trading. They got a couple over here. They now sell Chapman like knives in DLC, uh, DLC titanium. It looks like the blade might also be, I'd have to confirm that. The blade might also be DLC, which is really cool. That would be the reason that that one's a little bit more expensive. But if you remember the chat, those are made in the USA, by the way, super small batch, semi-custom. If you remember that knife from my channel, very different looking knife, but definitely very, very nice. They also have, I think it's, it's surely still here. There's no way it's gone from my most, yeah. So obviously the Praetorian tie is still incredibly popular and this will eventually sell, but it's cool to see these land. Over, I got to be honest with you guys. Um, I, I've owned the Praetorian tie. This was like the first overbuilt ridiculous knife that I obsessed over. I bought mine on Arizona Custom Knives for $1,300, which at the time I felt like I dramatically overpaid for. Now, nowadays, I would be blown away to have the opportunity to only pay $1,300. This is the only Medford knife that I have considered repurchasing in recent years. Nothing from Medford has interested me. And so his main flagship model is the only thing that I would ever consider. And this knife, you know, despite being hilariously overpriced, this is a knife that probably shouldn't cost more than about 1200 bucks in my opinion, right? But it's 2150 There's nothing I can do about it. I got to be honest, it is tempting, uh, especially considering that Medford's production quality has dramatically improved since the last time I bought my Praetorian. And truth be told, I loved my Praetorian. I thought it was so nice. These are way nicer now. Uh, that... Uh, anodizing and the sculpting is beautiful. Uh, the pocket clip's still the same. The blade S45 VN Vulcan, I think, looks awesome. Absolutely wonderful. And if you're going to have one of the blade steels he offers on an incredibly overbuilt knife, S45 would be the way. The thing that is holding me back, obviously, is the fact that it's a $2,000 knife. I own a lot of knives that cost over $2,000, and... This is not a $2,000 knife. So neat. If you're really into Medford knives, and maybe that's worth it to you. Not for me. Um, what was the... Oh, yeah, the, the plain Mordax. The original button lock Mordax is back. If you know the history of the Mordax, Ferrum Forge used to be an American mid-tech. Much larger. Really wish they'd do that again. This was the knife that got people interested in the idea of production button locks. From companies like Protech. It was always also interesting because Protech, known for automatic knives, this was their, you know, one of the only manuals that they were offering at the time. This was the one that drew the interest, the one that created the button lock craze. The reason we have so many button locks now is because of the, um, the uh, Malibu, which came slightly after this. This guy disappeared for years. Now it's back. This is a cool knife, definitely. It's also pretty big 3.75 inch blade i think completely worth 240 dollars from protec I, actually i think that's an excellent price tag don't sleep on that it's a great knife moving on there's the tanto non-serrated if you want the tanto red led t there it is right there tanto uh different finish we got the two-tone tanto which is fun to say led t very popular right now for sure Sorry, there's one other thing that I, I feel like I'm missing here. The Nottingham Tactical Pins. I was I stopped to look at those. One in particular, right there. So this, and anybody who's seen anything on this video that has really enraged them in terms of price, this will definitely, this will drive it home. But it, I, I wanted to make this point. Uh, this is obviously a custom pen. Um, and it's all, I, I believe they're also made in the USA. Yeah. It's also made out of mocha type right? Now, that won't stop people from complaining about the fact that this is a $1,165 pen. That's a lot of money for a thing that just writes, right? I mean, you know, there are multi-thousand dollar knives out there. That's a, that's a lot of thousands for a thing that's just cuts, right? You could say that about anything. And the point that I made when I recorded this the first time was, if you're the type of person to look at this and look at that price tag, right? It's one thing to go, no, I'm not paying that for that right? I think that's perfectly fine. That's, that's a rational thing, right? Um, you have to be a slightly irrational person to want to buy this. I think that's, I think it's kind of neat, but 
Uh, it is a lot of money for that. And that, that's, you know, that should be where it ends. Some people get super triggered by this type of stuff. The fact that this exists, the mere fact that this exists, sends them into a rage. I've literally seen people type walls of text, like absolutely furious. They take time out of their day and invest emotional energy, dedicated emotional energy, to typing up a, I don't, essentially a book detailing their frustrations. If you're the type of person who will allow yourself to be mentally, emotionally, or even physically upset, all three of those, right? The trifecta, upset over the existence of this thing. I would ask you reconsider <clears throat> the investment of time that you're about to make. Because no matter how much spaghetti sauce comes in or out of your butt over something like this, it will still be here. Eventually, it will be purchased, meaning that you have catapulted all of your emotions into the ether for nothing. Don't spend your time being bothered, right? As somebody who is a professional time spender of either being excited or bothered by these things that exist, I can tell you the, only, the reason that I do it is because I can't help it, right? And I mean, at least I'm being paid to do it, right? But also, I know full well that there's no reason to sit and dwell on it, right? Um, and it's very different from predatory companies marking up their products because they're selling you some sort of culture, right? Uh, or trying to mislead you into thinking that there's a, a spot in your life where this makes utilitarian sense. This is simply a listing for a hyper custom pen. It's very obvious. It's like, hey, we made this simple object out of incredibly expensive materials in a uh, geographical location on earth where it's very expensive to do these things. This is probably for almost nobody, but it's for somebody, right? That's very different than a company trying to sell you some sort of cultural experience in the form of a simple thing that they have marked up into oblivion. Don't, don't waste your emotional energy. I guarantee you that I'm going to get, the irony is that the, that the response I'm going to get to that speech is nothing but long text. Like that's, what's going to happen. And I'll save, I'll save you. You know, I'm not, I'm probably not going to read it. <laughs> oh God. You can hear what I have to say, but I'm not going to take, it sounds so bad. I prop maybe I will. Maybe I will read it. You know, go ahead and type it up. I'll take a glance at it. All right. Maybe you got something. There's a lot of good stuff on e-knives. That's going to be it, guys. Um, I will link all these pages down in the description. Please check them out. Be watching DLT trading. This is the time of year where DLT specifically starts to sneak in really wild stuff. <laughs> Sorry. My sinuses. I'm right about this. DLT notoriously in October and November drops absolutely insane fire. So I'll do my best to notify you guys when I see stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll notify you guys in the uh, community tab. But these are the months at the end of the year where really wild things drop out of nowhere. So if you're looking for that once a year purchase and you're, you're familiar with DLT trading, be watching because it's probably coming. Who knows? There's a lot of different, especially American companies, that you know a lot of the stuff that they're dropping is really hard to get. This is the time of year where that stuff drops, right? Uh, pointing specifically at the aluminum hinders and the new Les George model as a key indicator there. Probably some much crazier stuff yet to come. That's going to be it today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and on TikTok at the underscore metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.